Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. In this episode, you might notice first of all that I have 99 rupees instead of whatever I had, and that is because I had to replay the game again up to this point because I can't save until I get to a certain part of the game. But the only thing that we really need to do right now is go play that minigame for a third time, so I will see you guys over there at the appropriate time. And here we are back at the grotto at the entrance of this minigame for the third time at the dawn of the third day. I have to beat this one more time to get that hard piece that I mentioned. In my opinion, the third day is not that bad as far as this minigame goes. Uh, to me, anyway, it's a little bit easier than the second day because there are some platforms in the middle that don't actually move. So you can kind of use those as like launching points to get the rest of them. But we have a minute and 16 seconds this time to get all of the rupees. And one thing I kind of wanted to mention about the last day is actually just that. In Japan or in the Japanese version of this game, the final day is not called the final day as it says down there in our little timer thing. It's actually called the last day. I'm not really sure why they, you know, changed it for the American release. I'm not sure about the European version. I have to imagine that one's probably also final. But like I said, yeah, the Japanese version is last. And the weird thing is, it's actually in English instead of Japanese. I'm not sure why that is either. And that's another thing that I've noticed. Even back when I was doing the Kingdom Hearts fi or 2 Final Mix Let's Play, a lot of the game was actually in English. And, such as all of the cutscenes in the game were in English in the Japanese release. I'm not sure why there's so much English in all of these Japanese releases. If anybody, you know, knows a little bit more about the Japanese culture or whatever, whatever would influence that, I would certainly love to know. But I am done with this mini game here. I got it on the first try. That's actually kind of surprising. And I did it in a time of 45 seconds and whatever, 25 milliseconds. Not exactly sure what that would be. But they now consider me a pro and pros cannot play here. So to get me to leave, they give me a piece of heart. And that actually feels kind of good to be recognized as a pro even though I failed so many times on the second try. But yeah, they consider me a fierce competitor and they are actually scared that I guess I'm gonna come in there and clean them out of all of their rupees and whatever else the rewards they have are. But now that I am done with that, we are pretty much done with everything there is to do in this game. Or not in the game, that would be crazy short if that was all there was in the entire game. On the first three day cycle, that is pretty much all there is to do. But I wanna go ahead and show you the bank. I think I might have mentioned the bank in the last episode, and I love how the postman has walked right on through him, and I guess he's right there, so he's in two places at once. But, I, yeah, like I said, I think I mentioned the banker in the last episode. The bank is a fairly interesting concept in this game. This guy, I'm not going to read all of his dialogue, but what he's basically telling us is that people are not depositing money because, I guess, everyone's leaving because of the moon is about to crash into Clock Town. But he's also telling us that if we deposit 200 rupees, we will get a prize. I'll be doing that in a few minutes, but I'm going to go ahead and deposit all 99 of my rupees right now. Because the only way you can save your rupees between cycles of three days is that you have to deposit it in this bank right here. And he will give us a special stamp with his special ink or whatever that somehow tells him how much money we have deposited. That's a really weird system for saving people's accounts, I guess. But if we don't give him our money, then we will not save our money between three-day cycles. And that's another thing that I should mention. Other items like Deku Nuts and Arrows and stuff like that do not get saved between days. So you, the only things you can really save are your rupees. But speaking of rupees, this golden flower right here, if you get it just right, you can come up here up on top of this platform, which has been being built. I guess I'm not going to get it on the first try. But that guy has been building it over this course of three days. And on the third day, you can actually go up there and get a treasure chest, which I do believe has a... It's either a silver or a purple rupee up there, so it's worth going up there to get that. Especially right now, since I want to get to 200 rupees for the adult wallet. I guess I'm not going to get it very easily. Luckily, we have a lot of time, so I guess I'll speed this up until I actually do get it. Okay, I'm not exactly sure what was different that time. Oh, this guy better not push me off. 
where i guess i'm on the wrong side of the treasure chest there we go i was gonna say first of all i thought that guy was gonna push me off second of all i thought i was just not gonna be able to open it but we do get a purple rupee which i think is one of the things that i thought it was gonna be i'm starting to think this job was impossible that kind of is a little bit of a foreshadowing not really a foreshadowing just a reflection of my thoughts while i was trying to get that i thought that was going to be impossible but anyway there's another treasure chest over there that i don't think we're gonna be able to get at this point we're probably gonna have to be Link to get this one yet yeah, we're not gonna be able to make this i was kind of hoping that right there i was kind of holding out hope i should say that we would fall over to it but that was way too far but with that 50 rupees we are 51 rupees short of getting the adult wallet so since we do have a couple of more in-game hours until we have to be back to the clock tower I am going to go ahead and grind up the requisite number of rupees to get the adult wallet. I will meet you guys when I have done that. All right, guys, here we are. I have deposited. I deposited that 50 that I got from that treasure chest, and here is an extra 52, which means we have deposited 201 total rupees to this guy, and we've already saved up 200 rupees, which means we get our special gift, which is the adult wallet, which is kind of weird because we're not an adult yet, even though I guess it doesn't matter. We can use it even though we're kind of a kid at this point, but with the adult wallet, we can store up to 200 rupees in our wallet. And I love how that guy's like, go get more rupees and give them to me. I almost wish there was like an interest system that you could use. I might be getting a little bit too complicated for a Zelda game as far as finances go. But it is about 8.30 at this point in the game. We have to wait until midnight before we can go into the clock tower and advance the plot. So once again, I guess I'll meet you guys back here when we are able to go in the clock tower. And with that, it is now midnight. I was going to say, we only have six minutes left to get up there. It looks like it's going a little bit faster than six actual minutes. But in any case, all we really have to do is walk up the staircase. this ah tail we've been looking for you too hey skull kid what if you gave that mask you're wearing back now hey come on are you listening swamp mountain ocean canyon hurry the four who are there bring them here don't speak out of line stupid fairy no what are you doing to my brother skull kid do you still think you're our friend after that well, whatever. Even if they were to come now, they wouldn't be able to handle me. Hee <laughs> hee. Just look above you. If it's something that can be stopped, then just try to stop it. And we found the Ocarina of Time, which is our precious instrument that Princess Zelda gave to us in the Ocarina of Time game, of course the prequel to this game. Suddenly, memories of Princess Zelda come rushing back to us.
What just happened? Everything has... Started over. What? What are you anyway? That song you played, that instrument. That instrument. Wait, that's it, your instrument. The mask salesman said that if you got back, the precious thing was stolen from you, he could return you to normal. Did you completely forget or what? No, I did not forget. That is just the game's clever way of reminding us that we need to go back and talk to the Happy Mask Salesman, which I'm going to do right now. Were you able to recover your precious item from that imp? Oh, 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 you got it, you got it, you got it, you got it! Then listen to me. Please play the song that I am about to perform, and remember it well. This is a melody that heals evil magic and troubled spirits, turning them into masks. I am sure it will be of assistance to you in the future. Ah yes, I give you this mask in commemoration of this day. Fear not, for the magic has been sealed inside the mask. When you wear it, you will transform into the shape you just wore. When you remove it, you will return to normal. Now I've fulfilled my promise to you. So please give me that which you promised me. Don't tell me. My mask. You did. Get it back. Didn't you? What have you done to me? If you leave my mask out, there's something terrible will happen! The mask that was stolen from me. It is called Majora's Mask. It is an accursed item from legend that is said to have been used by an ancient tribe in its hexing rituals. It is said that an evil and wicked power is bestowed upon the one who wears that mask. According to legend, the troubles caused by Majora's Mask were so great the Ancient Ones, fearing such catastrophe, sealed the mask in shadow forever, preventing its misuse. But now, that tribe from the legend has vanished, so no one really knows the true nature of the mask's power. But I feel it. I went to great lengths to get that legendary mask. When I finally had it, I could sense the doom of a dark omen brewing. It was that unwelcome feeling that makes your hair stand on end. And now, that imp has it. I am begging you, you must get that mask back quickly or something horrible will happen. I'm begging you, I'm begging you must do it. <laughs> really? You'll do it for me? I was certain you would tell me that. You'll be fine. Surely you can do it. Believe in your strengths. Believe.
that mask. The Skull Kid uses the power of that mask to do those terrible things. Well, whatever it takes, we've got to do something about it. The swamp, mountain, oceans, and canyon that Tail was trying to tell us about. I bet he was referring to the four areas just outside town. There's one in each compass direction. But what do you suppose he meant by the four who were there? I have no idea. He always skips important stuff. I guess we should just go and find out. If we go through that gate straight ahead, we'll be heading in the direction of the swamp. And now that we are Human Link, we are pretty much ready to go forth with our quest, and we are going to be going to the swamp in the next episode. I want to thank you guys for watching this episode of Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, and I hope to see you guys back for the next episode.